Today I'm going to be showing you how to dye with indigo. I'm going to be making an indigo um, mother vat with iron, so an iron indigo vat, and I'm going to be no, dyeing a pair of overalls which I made in our last video. This is These are the pair that I made in the last video, um, and I'm hopefully going to be getting them nice and blue today. So before I get started, I just wanted to mention a few great indigo resources for those of you who want to try out some indigo dyeing. First of all, my friend Britt Bowles of Sea Spell Fibre has an amazing course called um, Intuitive Indigo, the Dogwood Dyer. Um, she has an amazing course and information about indigo and a whole um, subscription for a whole year of natural dyes. If you'd like to buy any indigo or natural dyes, you can buy um, from the Mazi Natural Dyes. They're an amazing family-run um, company in Turkey. There's also Stony Creek Colours and Bailiwick Blue in Guernsey in the UK. They all have great quality natural dyes and also the Mazi sells fabric as well, which is cool to note. Um, and I will link all of the um, links in the description. So I'm going to be making an indigo mother today um, to transfer to my larger vat. Um, it's going to be an iron indigo vat and an indigo mother is basically like um, a mini vat and it's good because it gives you a little bit more control so if you need to change something like the pH or if something's not quite right with how your vat's um, reducing you can kind of adjust things easier in a smaller quantity and that's the idea anyway. So I'm going to be using my indigo from the Mazi. I've got some slaked lime here and some ferrous, sulf oops, ferrous sulfate um, iron powder. I've been on a really um, big indigo learning curve recently. Um, this vat is an iron vat and I made it nearly two months ago and I haven't touched it since then. So to wake it up today so that I can transfer my mother to it, I'm just going to give it a good stir to start with. I made two vats before this one and I had some real big issues with them um, and I didn't manage to get them going in the end which was quite disappointing but it was actually a huge huge learning curve for me. Um, it offered me a lot of insight into how indigo vat works, vats work and it also gave me a big appreciation for the kind of intuitive nature of indigo in general which is why I love um, my friend Brit Bowles course so much. Um, it really is alive. <laughs> um, that's, that's all you can say about it really. It's just so alive and it has a personality and a temperament that you um, need to get to know. It's not as simple as just measuring out the quantities and then bam, you've got it. Sometimes you have to listen to it a bit more deeply and see hear what it's saying. So um, yeah, I haven't touched this iron vat for over two months and it was very blue, which meant that there wasn't any indigo available to be dying. But as soon as I've started stirring it, you can see that it's going very green. So the indigo is reducing in there. And I decided to use an um, iron vats because they work well without heat and it was winter when I started making these vats a couple of months ago. It's getting warmer now but I wanted to be able to just kind of die without having to heat up the, the vat. So I've given this vat a really good stir and now I'm just going to let it settle for a good amount of time and get to making my smaller mini vat, which is also called a stock solution sometimes as well. So just a little bit more about the solution that I'm about to make. Um, I already have my iron indigo vat 
which I'm pretty sure has quite a bit of indigo left in it. So I'm just using 50 grams of indigo powder today and I'm using the one, two, three recipe. So it's one part um, indigo, two parts iron, three parts lime. Um, and the iron vat is a little bit different because, to the other types of vats because normally these two would be swapped around. So it'd be one point part indigo, um, two parts lime and three parts sugar, whatever your sugar is gonna be. I also just wanted to no note that if you are using um, iron, it's a good idea not to do it around little kids um, because high quantities or pets because high quantities of iron can be um, considered toxic, um, which is why Shade has gone out with her granny now while we do this. Also, if you're working with powders, it's important to wear a mask because you don't want to be breathing in any of those um, dusty particles. So now it's the fun part. So. A little bit of hot water. This is like the most satisfying. Maybe put too much hot water in there, but you want to make a kind of paste. I'm going to, I've got this um, jar that I've been using, used for my last mother. And I'm going to use it again because there's still some indigo left in there. So I'm just going to try and transfer this paste without making too much mess into this bowl. I'm going to rinse that with hot water and I'm just going to scoop this out as much as possible. It's really stinky. kind of grows on you this smell. Next I'm going to wet out my iron powder. It's essentially rusty rusty water. And I'm gonna gently add it to my solution. So now I'm going to add the lime and I'm not going to add all of it straight away. I'm going to add a little bit of it and then test the pH. Now I have noticed from my personal experience, and I'm not sure if other people find this too, but often, oh well, over the last few months with experimenting with indigo a bit, I've noticed that I need to add most of the lime, even if the pH is already at the right level. Um, I don't really know why, but it seems that that kind of sets off the um, reducing ac action and enables me to get better results with the dye. So I'm going to add just a little bit to start with, give it a stir. So really important to wear your mask when you're working with lime powder and do it gently. You could also make a liquid with this first and then add it, which is probably a better idea actually. So I'm just gonna do that for now. I'm just gonna get my indigo stick and stir it in very gently. So this is kind of like a thick paste at the moment. So. I'm going to want to add a little bit more liquid. Warm liquid is best because it kind of can help activate the process, the reducing process, reduction process. 
and just gently stir it. So you're going to give this a really good stir for maybe even about five minutes, ten minutes, however long you feel it wants to be stirred for. I'm just going to check the pH as well, which looks good, it's very, about 12, which is what I want it to be. So you can see that I haven't used all of my lime. So I'm going to let this um, solution, this mother, rest for an hour or so. You'll start to see that the um, liquid goes green. And then I'll do a little test strip to dye, dye with it, and then I'll transfer it to my main vat. And when I do a test strip there, I'll see if I need to add any more lime or not. So I just wanted to check if my vat, um, I haven't really done anything to except for stir it, um, to see if it's dying, and it is. It's had a couple of dips, this um, piece of cotton. Um, and it's got quite a good amount of indigo in there still, so that's really cool. So really, if I wanted to, I mean, I can die with that straight away now. I don't really need to add my mother, but I'm I did so much dyeing with it last time. It seemed never ending, so I'm pretty confident that if I add my mother to it, then I won't, I won't do any harm and I'll get a good colour for the overalls that I want to dye this afternoon. So that's three dips, two dips, one dip. <laughs> Billy's back from school now and this has had time to settle a little bit. Um, I've also given it a little a bit of extra heat to see if that helps the reduction. So I'm going to dip this piece of fibre in and see what happens. I'm just dipping it to there because I don't really want to get any sediment. Oh, yeah, it's going darker. And you want to transfer as gently as possible. Mm, you could even dip it in, but I'm just going to pour it really gently. You want to avoid getting the oxygen in. I don't have much choice apart from to do it like this. Just make sure you get everything out. There's quite a lot of sediment there, so I'm just gonna... Oops. Voila. Now I'm gonna give it a good stir again and wait for it to settle and then hopefully I'll be ready to die. Really cold this fat.
Satisfying. So here are the results on two pairs of overalls. I'm really happy with them. I think my intuition was telling me that maybe the mother could have waited a little bit longer, just had a bit more time to do its thing before I transferred it to the to the main dye pot but really I mean the results are amazing so I've got nothing to complain about. The one thing I do notice with indigo is that it really does respond to patience and presence so if you're in a rush it's not really the dye to be using and sometimes it works really quickly but you just have to see how it goes on the day. I'm really happy with these results. It's really dark in some places. And this is the fabric from the Marzi that I used in my last video. And these will be my summer overalls. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you'd like to make your own pair of overalls, head over to my website where you can buy my PDF printable patterns. And you can follow me on Instagram at Billy New Apparel and all the links will be in the description below. Please like and subscribe. Bye!